everyone, this is June Blender at Sapien Technologies. And today we're going to be talking about naming PowerShell XML help files. Now this is not the most exciting topic that we've ever covered, but it is fairly complex, so it deserves some attention. And most importantly, I've noticed recently that many of the modules that those of us in the PowerShell community really depend on have broken help because of misnamed XML help files. In this video, I'll explain the rules for naming help files, how they've changed, and how to automate the process of naming XML help files so that you don't need to grapple with this error-prone topic at all. So, let's get started. Let's start with the rules for naming PowerShell XML help files. They're a bit complex, so bear with me. We'll get through this. The help topic for a commandlet, provider, sim command, or workflow must be in an XML file that's named for the source file in which the command is defined. So, if I've defined a command in system.management.automation.dll, get help looks for a help topic for that command in system.management.automation.dll dash help dot xml. If I put the help topic for that command in any other help file with any other name, get help won't find it. This is also true for sim commands, which are defined in cdxml files. If my sim command is defined in this cdxml file, get help will look for the help topic for that sim command in a help XML file with the very same name and the suffix dash help dot XML. And the same for script workflows. The names of XML help files for PowerShell functions are quite different. In fact, they're completely arbitrary and any name works. The functions that are defined in a source file like a PSM1 file can be in any help file they can be in the same help file, they can be in different help files, and they can even be in help files that are designed and named for other command types, like a dllhelp.xml file. But the function requires an external help comment keyword to associate the name of the function with the name of a help file. Let's look at a real-life example to make this a little bit clearer. Here I have a test module and it has two functions and this get good night function has an external help comment keyword that tells PowerShell that the help topic for get good night is in a pure XML help dot psm1 dash help dot XML file. This function is placed in a help file that's named for the PSM1 file in which it's defined. Now that's a best practice, but it's not required for PowerShell. And you can see that the sibling function of this function, get good morning, has an external help comment keyword that tells PowerShell that its help topic is in a file called wacky tacky monster doodle.xml. But to PowerShell, it works just the same. Let's test it. So here I've imported this pure XML help test file and I verified that good old wacky tacky monster doodle.xml is placed in a language specific subdirectory of the module's installation directory. And now when I run get help on the good morning function I get the help from the XML file. Now the PowerShell team realized that this was really too complex, that placing that external help comment keyword on every function in a very large module that might have hundreds of functions was really quite impractical. And they were also having trouble with SIM modules that might have hundreds of SIM commands, each defined in a separate source file. So they added some code to get help to make it easier for us to name XML help files. Beginning in PowerShell 4 for manifest modules, 
and completed it in PowerShell 5 for modules of all types. You can now name the XML help file for the module instead of for source files in the module. So for example, in our PSCX module, they could choose to name their help file pscx-help.xml or for microsoft.powershell.archive they could just append that dash help.xml not to the name of a source file but to the name of the module file and get help will look for it. This works for all module types, for all command types, and no external help comment keyword is required. But the catch is that even though it's backward compatible, the code was not backported. So if you put your XML help in a file with a module-based name, it will not work in manifest modules before 4.0 or script modules, binary modules before PowerShell 5. Now, I've been studying this for quite a while. It was my job to create XML help files and to teach others to do it. And I acknowledge that this is a really difficult thing to do. So let me show you how to automate it so you never have to think about these rules again. The task of naming XML help files for PowerShell, especially in a module that has multiple source files, is so complex that it's better left to automation. In PowerShell Help Writer, in every version, it does automatic naming of your help files for you. So let's look at an example of just how complex this can be. This is the DNS server module in Windows Server, and it's a SIM module. It has multiple CDXML files. In fact, it has 50 CDXML files and they all export SIM commands. So in order to properly document this, they have to have 50 cdxml-help.xml files. Now let's see if they do. They have 49 of them, which is complex enough. But if you look at these help files, you'll notice something interesting. They all have the same length, even though they have different file names. And in fact, they've actually shipped 49 identical help files. You can take a look at the hash, or if you don't want to trust your eyes, which you shouldn't, you can group them by the hash and see that these files are absolutely identical. And in fact, they've shipped 151 megabytes of duplicate files just because this task is so hard. So let me show you a way to make this easier. Here in PowerShell Help Writer, we'll go to File, New, New Help Project from Module. We'll select the DNS Server Module, click Export, and click Create. And when the task is complete, PowerShell Help Writer has created a cdxml-help.xml file for each cdxml file that defines a sim command in the module. Now, each of the help files contains only the commands that are defined in the corresponding cdxml file. But this is an incredibly difficult task that's really best not done by a person, and that's why we have Help Writer do it. And by doing this correctly, we've also had a significant effect on the help files that we need to ship with our module. So let's grab our console. And instead of shipping 151 megabytes of identical files, if we look at our help projects directory, which is done correctly, we've reduced this to about two and a half megabytes. And most importantly, the help files are named correctly so that GetHelp can find them and your users can read the help files that you so painstakingly assembled without having to worry about the complex, difficult, and changing rules for naming PowerShell XML help files. 
So that's naming PowerShell XML help files. I hope this has been useful. If you have trouble with your help files or help file names or have a question, be sure to tweet it to us. Thank you for listening.